Hey, you've all, uh, you know, today we're going to look at our ATS-2. This is an application tool set. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about each, each one of the tools. It's the contents of this kit. You know, in, in a lot of ways, it's very similar and, in fact, uh, is the same tools that's used by the dentist. So we'll, we'll uh, consider that as we, as we go forward here. But, you know, the, probably the, the nicest feature of this is, is the quality of the tools. You know, when, you, when you're spending a lot of um, time and effort to install strain gauge sensors, you want to make sure that you're not using a tool that's going to damage your work or cause the gauge to fail in the future. So, you know, when, when micro measurements puts our tools in these kits, we make sure that they're of the finest quality and the best suited for the task of installing strain gauges. Now, one, one thing that's in common with that is these are all made out of uh, anti-magnetic stainless steel. Uh, the handling surfaces are uh, honed and polished, especially on these tweezers. There's actually a couple pairs of tweezers in this kit, and I'll just go ahead and start describing those. Now, the first one is the, the pointed tweezers. Again, the handling surfaces are going to be very, very uh, honed and polished. It's not going to damage materials as you pick it up. When you push them together, they're going to fit uh, flush and, and with no or very, very, very small gap. Um, same with the flat tweezers. These, these tweezers have a, uh, a sharp end and when you press it together uh, they're, they're going to be able to pick up very thin objects, i.e. strain gauges, uh, without damaging it and, and without fumbling with it. Now that's, that's probably one of the biggest, and, I, and I've used some tools from say a hardware store or a drug store. Um, the biggest difference there is, is that those tools usually have serrated uh, surfaces which can da damage the strain gauge of the material that you're working with. Uh, the, these do not and, and are made of uh, materials that are going to last a very long time. Now, why are there two pairs of tweezers in here? Here's what you want to do as a strain gauger. When, when you're using the pointed tweezers, you want to use this to handle things that are dirty. Okay, uh, For example, wires. If you're holding a wire in place while you're soldering it, you're going to be using flux. Uh, you're going to handle things like tape with this. So there's going to be residues that will get onto these tweezers. And never should you handle a strain gauge with that because you're going to contaminate the strain gauge installation. That's why the, uh, this BTW-1 tweezer, this is the flat blunt tweezers as it's called, is supplied to handle strain gauges. Now, and the opposite to that is you would never want to use this tweezer to handle anything but strain gauges. That's why you've got other tools here for other purposes. This pair of tweezers you should always keep clean. You should clean it before you use it and uh, always keep it uh, in a pristine condition so that you don't damage a strain gauge and take advantage of that quality of the tool. Tweezers. Now uh, included in the kit are dental probes. Now, these, these dental probes, uh, just, just exactly like the ones that your dentist might use to uh, fix your teeth or inflict pain uh, when you go visit the, the dentist's office. In the case of strain gauges, these, these are used to hold things down. You know, you can, you can use it to hold down wires when you're soldering. You can use these to shape wires when you're soldering. That's why there's a pair of them in this kit. Uh, it's not that you have a spare. There are times in strain gauge installation when you need to use both of them. Very, very often a good example of that is we need to introduce a U-shape sometimes in the wire to decouple it from strain. So you have a pair of them. You can use one as a spindle, you can wrap the wire around it, and uh, you use them as a pair. Uh, of course, uh, anytime you're working with strain gauges, you're gonna need a good quality pair of uh, wire nippers and uh, this, this particular one we call the DWC-1 diagonal cutters and that's used for cutting wire obviously. Another tool is NNP-1 needle nosed pliers. Now we all know that it's hard to do any job without duct tape or needle nose pliers so you're going to find that this is this is very useful in, in uh, you know handling cables uh, a multitude of pur purposes with that, but you would probably not want to handle strain gauge with that. This is going to be a little bit, uh, you know, it does have that serrated edge so that you can grip, uh, and, it, and it would probably damage the strain gauge, much, much less it would be very difficult to pick up a strain gauge with that. Next item we'll look at is the 
SSH-1. These are surgical shears, another tool that your dentist might use. Uh, you might find on the tray in the dental office. These also have a polished edge. They're very, very sharp, even though they look like the types of scissors that you used in kindergarten to cut paper. Uh, they're actually a very precision uh, tool. Now, these would be used for trimming bondable terminals. We, we would not recommend trimming wire with that because over time it's going to uh, dull, dull the precision edge on that. But it would be used for cutting materials uh, such as tape uh, or the bondable terminals that you're using with strain gauges. Uh, normally, you would not use this to trim a strain gauge, although technically there's nothing wrong with that as long as you clean the surface first. But uh, in fact, we have a video posted that shows an easier way to do that with a straight edge razor blade. Two scales are provided. Uh, this, this is uh, actually identical if you, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, one of them is metric. Uh, we have one that uses the uh, SI units if you flip it over, it does have inches in tenths of an inch increment, and over here in uh, one hundredths, tens and one hundredths of an increment of inches. And we provide another scale that gives you a choice of 30 seconds, 60 fourths uh, inches uh, also on, on this scale. So this is just used so you can measure lengths of wire, use it as a straight edge when you're marking, uh, say, a burnish mark on a, on a location to bond a strain gauge. And the ends are square. It can, in some cases, be used so that you can uh, make sure you have a, a 90 degree mark. Final tool. You might find that, hopefully, uh, not in your dentist's office, but this is a precision surgical scalpel. And uh, this particular tool we call, a tool we call an SSC-1. So um, this, this would be used anytime you need a sharp edge. Uh, as a cutter, it's a very precise blade. We give you two spare, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> four, five spare blades uh, in, in there with it because this blade does get dull over time. You can, sw you can swap it out. The last uh, piece of equipment that is in this is a drafting pencil. This is becoming scarce these days because uh, probably, if not most, but all drafting is done using CAD CAM software. Uh, this is actually a 4H pencil, so it's a very hard lead. It would produce a very fine line if you tried to write with it on paper. But it is very useful for pr producing a burnish mark on one of the most commonly uh, encountered materials in strength age work, and that's aluminum alloys. So this, this is the recommended after sanding the surface. You'll see in all of our surface preparation uh, instructions. When you're ready to produce a mark, you'll use a 4-H lead on aluminum to produce a, a burnish mark without scratching the surface. And all of this is uh, provided in a carrying case. And uh, that's the ATS-2 application tool set.